Our decision is going round. People talking about the colors come to town. Fresh as a summer breeze, she'll take you by surprise. Good morning and welcome to another fabulous episode of Fresh Waves here on Whistle FM. We have a great show. This is part three of our four-part series of organ donation. And we're really, really happy to be presenting this series about organ donation awareness. It's a, a vitally important initiative. We're really, really, really pr- pleased that through our technical producer, Jason Rumble, we were able to connect with many different people and bring you all kinds of great discussions about organ donation. Before we start the show today, we have to give a big shout out to Research Market and Bakery at 5758 Main Street for the muffins that they've provided in the station today and the hot crust buns and all the great things that they do at this time of the year. They have all kinds of wonderful, wonderful goodies. And this morning, I even noticed that they have colorful little macaroon baskets with little chocolate eggs inside. They are so cute and they would look fantastic on your Easter table. They'll just look great. So go on into Reeser's Market and Bakery over there at 5758 Main Street and check out all the great things that they have for this time of the year. You won't be disappointed. Jason, Thank you for being behind the board this morning and working our technical aspects. My pleasure there, Brenda, and good morning to you, and good morning to our guests, uh, Jan and Franz. Good morning, yeah. ladies, yeah. Good um, and good morning to all of our listeners. It is a spring day out there, which puts a spring in my step and makes me feel great. I'm so excited to have a little bit of sunshine and warmer weather. We deserve it here in the north. So joining us in the studio this morning, we have... Franz and Jen. And both of them are very active within the Organ Donation Awareness and the Transplant Association and all the things surrounding organ donation. Later in the show, we'll be talking to uh, Ronnie Gavsey, and she's the CEO of the Trillium Gift of Life Network. And after that, we'll be talking with uh, Christine Humphreys, and she's from the iBank of Canada, which is one of the largest iBanks in the world if not the largest eye bank in the world. And prior to two weeks ago in doing this show, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I never heard of that either. Exactly. So I'm really looking forward to talking to those two women. They have a wealth of information. Over the last two weeks, we have invited people to send in their questions and promise that this would be the show this week and next week where we answer the really tough questions. So after we hear about both of our guests... We'll be talking with Ronnie and asking her some really tough questions. If any of you listening to the show have any questions, while we're live on the air, you can get a hold of us in the following ways. Jason? Yes, you can uh, get a hold of us on our Facebook page, Fresh Waves on Whistle FM. We're also on Twitter, at Fresh Waves Radio, and you can call us here at the station, 905-640-1027. Okay. You can also use that contact information, especially the Facebook page, to get a hold of us after the show with any questions that you have, and we will definitely forward the questions on to the appropriate people and get you the answers that you're looking for. We don't want you to not donate because you don't know the answers to your questions. We want you to be able to feel good about making the registration, going to be a donor.ca and registering to be an organ donor, and hey, saving a life. So, good morning, France. Good morning. We could uh, parler en français, mais tous les gens may not necessarily understand what we're saying, so we'll keep it in English. Is that okay with you? going to try my best in English, Brenda. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're very good at English. It's great to be bilingual. Absolutely. It's another gift. You it know? is indeed. <laughs> you know, they're doing a lot of work with schools, and I don't know if you know that École Pape Françoise is in Stouffville here, and it is a French language school, not French immersion. It is for people who have and can, you have to prove parentage that is French, French Canadian or French from France. So it's um, a really cool school. And organ donation awareness is so important. I have, I have these ideas and I have to share them while I'm on the air. I think it'd be great to do a half hour or an hour French 
program next year about organ donation and perhaps involve the school and the kids could share their comments and um, put forth their points of view. Absolutely. I'm all in it. Terrific. I'll talk to the principal and see if we can set something up. I think that would be wonderful. And I know that they would be also interested in having someone who speaks French to come in and speak because l often they have people who are English and blah, 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 and their, French, their school is all French. That's amazing because we already have a program which is the high school outreach mm -hmm. initiative and uh, I've been called to or, or at least I've offered to do it in French to present either in French or in English. And, but if the demand is there, absolutely. I mean, we don't miss any opportunity to raise awareness regarding organ and tissue donation. I know. And, and last week we had a, a very interesting guest who, um, her son died at the age of 10, but he had made his wishes known before his death that he wanted to donate his organs if anything should ever happen to him. These are young, young people. If we can reach these people and get them to, to acknowledge their wishes to their parents and have that difficult conversation. Apparently, he sat, he stood up at a Thanksgiving dinner and told his whole family to make sure that they registered to be organ donors. Amazing. And he was 10 years old. Isn't that something? It's wonderful. So they're never too young. Okay. Give us a little bit, uh, well, we have to say hello to you too. So we have <laughs> France, who is a kidney donor, and we have Jen, who is a kidney recipient. Right. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank Great. you. Great. You look fantastic. It's the kidney. It's the kidney, yeah. That's what Jason tells me. All the <laughs> it's the kidney. He looks great <laughs> because of his kidney and because of his sister. So, France, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about how you came to be sitting at this table here today and telling us all about being a kidney donor. Oh, I would say that it certainly started like about four decades ago, what oh. brought me here. <laughs> so my story is not about me, but about my family. So for a few decades, I mean, kidney disease, kidney or renal failure has been in the family. And uh, I'm so well called the blessed donor since uh, many members of my family I had transplants, some made it to transplants, some didn't. And out of three siblings, I'm the only one not having any kidney disease. And wow. I. Yes, it's a wow. You it's were a standing wow. in the right lineup when they were handing out those, uh, you know, DNA and all that. I call it winning at the lottery of life, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't think that any amount of money would, I mean, surpass that. Right. As health is the new wealth, I mean, I'm healthy and wealthy all the way. And so since being compatible to donate to my brother five years ago, so we just celebrated our fifth anniversary. And uh, looking at my brother living the dream, as he does explain, working full time, traveling full time, being a keynote speaker around the world. I mean, how couldn't I be sitting here today? to do my fair share of my part into raising awareness. So it's by looking at, I think my inspiration is about the recipients of, of all type of organs. When I see them going, living their life to the fullest, participating in those national and international games. So I look to myself and, and I said to myself, I mean, how, how can I complain in any way? I can't. I just can't. I just have to keep going. I mean, life is too beautiful. Every day has to be enjoyed to its fullest. And I just want people to know our organ donation can change one life, eight ones, uh, and, and 75 ones. And I know being from a family where our father was sick for many years, that all that part does affect the family and the community mm -hmm. because everything revolve around I mean the dialysis treatments and I mean being back to the hospital in and out uh, getting a call to be on the waiting list for an organ transplant and at some point not making it so it gets you to be quite familiar with the whole picture right. and I think that if I can just keep going on and seeing everything that has been done in the last 40 years. 
Some people will say, oh my God, it's kind of tragic that so many members of your family are affected by the kidney uh, failure, kidney disease. But I say, well, let's look at the past to better head on to forward. the forward, mm -hmm. going forward. What was not possible in the 70s, now, I mean, it's a piece of cake. And we're just science when you, you've just witnessed at first hand or science technology has evolved and what is possible nowadays and with the living donors i mean people signing their cards as being a deceased donor you've seen it all you say wow there is just magic going there mm -hmm. miracle to happen yeah well that is amazing we're going to take our first break and when we come back we'll hear from jen and We'll ask a few questions of the live donor sitting before us today in the studio. Stay tuned. You're listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Bren Masson, host of Fresh Waves. April is Organ Donation Awareness Month in Canada. If you haven't already done so, please go to beadonor.ca and register as an organ donor. It only takes a second, and it's a decision you'll never regret. Be a donor. Save a life. Go to beadonor.ca. Today I'm going to try to change the world. Today we're talking about organ donation awareness. All of our shows are podcasted on the website freshwaves.ca. So if you'd like to hear any of these Whistle FM productions, you can go to freshwaves.ca and listen at your leisure on your computer, wherever you have access to the internet. So we'll continue our discussion now. We've, we've spoken with uh, Franz, who is a kidney donor, and now we get to speak with Jen, who is a kidney recipient. But I want to make it clear that you didn't get her kidney, and she didn't get it. No, no. You guys didn't know each other <laughs> before all the transplanting stuff happened. You made right. through the organ donation. And I can't say enough about the connection and the circle of friends that this organization has produced because the one thing that is true of all of the shows that we've done and all the people that we've met is that all of you have met incredible people through this process. What a wonderful thing. That's really great. Okay, Jen, take it away. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm Jennifer Chucci. I'm married, and uh, for 25 years, I have one son, and uh, my kidneys failed when he was four and a half years old. Oh. And... Uh, it was during SARS in 2003. Oh, my goodness. So, um, timing. It was horrible. Um, so what happened was we had just come back from Disney World. My husband noticed I was tired, and I realized that um, after work, I reach home around 6 o'clock, and then I have dinner at 7. I take a nap, and then I would go back to bed at 9. I said, something's wrong. I went to the family doctor. He did some blood work and said, my hemoglobin is 67, and I should go to the hospital. I went to the hospital on a Monday, they did the blood work, and within three hours, they said to me, um, you're, uh, do you have kidney problems? I said, no, your kidneys have failed. And um, they said to me, you have to go for get some blood transfusion. I said, that's okay, I'll take the blood transfusion and I'll go home after. They said, no, we have to admit you. I'm like, okay. And then I mentioned to them, I have a son, he's four and a half years old. So I was admitted on Tuesday. I meant Monday I had contact with my workplace on Tuesday and tell them that I couldn't come to work. My hemoglobin is 67, my kidneys have failed. And then they had to do emergency surgery on Thursday so I can be um, on dialysis. Um, now, do you have a history of, of kidney disease in your family? No. Or, or anything that you could refer back to and say, well, yeah, it stands to reason because, you know, my great aunt Zelda had... There's kidney no disease. kidney disease in my whole family. I'm the only one. That's amazing. Did you have a serious childhood illness or anything? No, no. Nothing. Wow. Holy moly. If you're tired, go to the doctor, get it checked out. That's the moral of the story. Okay. That's incredible. You must have been in shock. I was in shock. I was. Because I had gone to the doctor in um, before we had gone on a vacation in June. I had gone to see him two weeks before. And he says, Jennifer, you're fine. But I kept on going to him that I felt tired. And he says, it's because you're hypothyroid. That's why you're, you're active. That's why you're tired. Huh. Okay. So, um, so then, as a result, I lived in the hospital for three months because of SARS. 
So my son wasn't allowed to come and visit me because he could catch SARS or I can pass SARS to him. So the communication with him was over the phone. And then later on, I was allowed to have weekend passes so I can visit him um, on weekends. Um, I'm very grateful for this um, organ transplant, the kidney, because I was able to see my son grow up. Right. I was there for him when um, he was uh, graduating from junior kindergarten to kindergarten, senior kindergarten, grade six, um, then grade um, then grade eight, and then uh, from high school. I was able to spend time with him, travel with him, be on parents' council to see him grow up, spend time with my husband and I. We went. We were able to travel. We went to Florida. Um, then last year, we did a lot of traveling with my son. Um, I bonded with him a lot last year. <laughs> How old is he now? He's uh, 20. Wow. Yeah. So this is quite some time ago, 16 years ago. Yes. So I, the transplant is 10 years old. I was on dialysis for five years. And when I was on dialysis, they had told me that I have to wait for about 10 years for a kidney. For a kidney. Yeah. Okay, so they were, they were looking for any donor. Did people in your family get tested? Oh, very good question. My dad came forward, and this was uh, 15 years ago, because I was on dialysis for five years, and then kidney transplants 10 years. He came forward. He was about 75, and they stated that he was too, too old back then. Okay. One of my brothers came forward. And they tested him, but he wasn't um, compatible. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, I was on dialysis. I would go to dialysis three times a week and uh, be on the machine for about four hours. Um, and then uh, when the uh, phone call came in for the transplant, I was shocked because, I, because my antibodies were very high. Um, they said to me that if I get a transplant, my body would reject it. Rejected. I had a biopsy done that same week too, and they said uh, it was called IG nephropathy. My own body destroyed my two kidneys. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, that's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah, your body should like your kidneys. They should. Yes. Hmm. All right. So you you got the phone call. How did that feel? Oh, <laughs> I, I was in shock. I said to them, um, I don't think you got the right person. Because, uh, you know, like it's five years. You mentioned to me 10 years. And they said, no, no, you're the right person. And they said, you know, you have to come down as soon as possible. So I took a taxi um, all the way to Toronto General. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, went to mid and I said, I'm here for the kidney transplant. They tell me I have to come right here. They said, yeah, 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 hold on. So they took me um, to the transplant floor and they did more tests. This was around 12 o'clock, and um, the doctors come in, and they talk to me, explain to me um, about the transplant. Uh, I had a booklet, a thick binder of all the procedure. <laughs> um, talked, I called all my, my brothers and sisters, and my dad and mom, that I'm going for surgery. Yeah, I was. But they had found a donor. They must have been thrilled, but scared at the same time. Yes, they were scared. And you, you were told that your body would reject it even if you got a transplant. So it must have been a scary place for you to be. But yes, because I had so many, um, my antibodies were very high. But this donor, I am blessed because they said my body would not reject this kidney transplant. They did a lot of tests to make sure I was compatible with this kidney. So you had the highest compatibility. Yes, yes. Wow. And so you went ahead with the surgery. What happened when you woke up? Because <laughs> I know Jason said that when he woke up, he instantly felt better. He knew that he felt better. We had a gentleman on, Eric, last week who had a double lung transplant. And he said when he woke up, uh, he didn't feel great, but he could breathe. And he knew that he was alive and breathing. And it, it's such an incredible feeling. So did you feel well when you woke up? Uh, when After the surgery, I said to them, I'm ready for the surgery. And they said, you, we just finished the surgery. Like, <laughs> I was like, I, and then, um, then they had told me ahead of time that I'm going to be in this room all white, hooked up to all these tubes. So I was prepared for that. And then there was a nurse there and I said, okay, um, I'm ready. I want to go out and walk. She says, no, no, no. Lots of energy. I was like, I said, this is what normal must feel like. For two weeks, I had so much energy. I wanted to do everything. It felt really good. Oh, I can imagine. 
that. Yes. And it was clear sailing. The, the surgery went well. Everything was fine. And um, no. No. Okay. So um, two weeks later. Uh, um, after the surgery, two years, it was, I mean, two weeks was very good. But then I had some, um, how should I say it, uh, women issues. Okay. Yeah. But then after two years, it was sailing really good, f feeling vibrant and lots of energy. And great. Like they get, they have medication that you're on and things like oh, that. Oh, yes. So they would, it probably takes a while to jiggle it around and make sure that it works exactly right for you. Terrific. Well, it's so nice that everything went well because here you are today and you have more energy than I do. And I have two kidneys working perfectly fine at the moment. Well, as far as I know. Oh, I've and got three kidneys. Well, you've got three because they keep the other one. Yeah, they keep the other two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we had Melanie Claussen on, Melody Claussen earlier. That was She was one of our first uh, interviews this year. She's got four. Four? She's got four kidneys hanging out in there. Oh, She's okay. had two transplants. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's kind of funny that they don't take the other ones out. So, you know, it's like you've got kidney beans in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel good now? Oh, I feel good because uh, when I heard, of, like I was in the clinic and I read about these um, organ transplant recipients and they go to Africa to go to all these world transplant games. And I said, I would like to do that. I want to do that. But then when I reach home, I forget about the games. However, wow. when I found out that Toronto was going to have the Canada games, I said, Every day, I kept on reminding myself, I'm going to compete, I'm going to compete. And what did you compete in? Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> I'm not good in sports. So I feel it's the kidney that's doing it. Okay. I've won medals, and I've never won a medal before. So I entered um, uh, running, um, and I did mm -hmm. swimming, and I did uh, bowling. I entered five sports, and I won five medals. I'm very grateful for the organ transplant. Wow, it must have come from a super athlete. Yeah. Some of that energy got transferred into you. That's amazing. That is truly amazing. Yes. So before that, you weren't an athlete at all? No. I wasn't in sports. I never won a medal before. <laughs> so how did it feel when you won your first medal? You must have been over the moon. Oh, I was so... I was like, well, I belong to this little kidney group. And I said to them, I'm going to go for swimming because I haven't been swimming for a long time. I'm ready to be in last place for swimming, but I won a bronze. And that was so excited to win a medal, any medal. I was so happy. That's great. Yes. If I, won a, if I won a swimming contest, it would be because I misrepresented myself and went in an over 80 swimming contest. Then I would have a chance of winning a medal. <laughs> 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 yeah. But that's amazing. And you, there you are, friends. You're sitting here smiling from <laughs> ear to ear. Doesn't it, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? It does. It does. I mean, to have this opportunity to witness all the little miracles of organ donation, transplantation, and at some point to be a little part of it, to be able to make a difference. And um, as Jen referred to, to the games that we are quite involved in, either, as I mentioned, on the national level or the, uh, the world level, is, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I mean, the, the community, that transplant community is not only local, national, but it's international. And before transplant or donating a kidney or a part of our liver, we knew almost nobody. But we feel that when we meet people that we already know them because we have so much in common yes. though we speak different languages we have different faith i mean we have different backgrounds and all that so for me it's well i mean the the unity we always say that the games it's amazing when we win medals i got a medal in vancouver because living donors and family of deceased donors are also invited now to participate to the games mm -hmm. and so i do the 5k i mean i ran in malaga spain two years ago and did vancouver with jen this year wow. and yes. uh, and to have a medal is something because it's always some bling bling to bring home <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, but but at the same time it's more for like the the camaraderie the you know, the, the spirit. It's the sp a definition of community, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
That'd be my phone. We have listeners who are sending us questions. We're going to get to their questions as we take a little break here on Fresh Waves. Hi, this is Bren Masson, host of Fresh Waves. April is Organ Donation Awareness Month in Canada. If you haven't already done so, please go to beadonor.ca and register as an organ donor. It only takes a second, and it's a decision you'll never regret. Be a donor. Save a life. Go to beadonor.ca. Today I'm going to try to change the world. 